Today we're going to be talking all about the J sound. This lesson might feel a little bit like a doozy, but I hope you'll hang in there with me until the very end because you'll be getting some really good content for practice. What does it mean to feel like a doozy? Well, it just means that something's challenging, cumbersome, more difficult than we would like. I might say that, for example, after taking a physics test, because physics is definitely not my strong point, it's not one of my strongest subjects, after a physics test I might say, whoa, that was a doozy. So I'm curious to know in your language, do you have an idiomatic expression that has that similar meaning? Hi guys, my name is Mara Lees and I'm here with Ama Accents. We're going to jump right into our sound for the day, which is the J sound. The J sound is represented in the International Phonetic Alphabet with this symbol. The J sound shows up in writing in five different ways. Sometimes the J sound is represented by the letter G, the letter J, or these three letter combinations, DR, DU, and DG. Let's look at some examples. Jump, gel, drink, drop, drive, schedule, educate, gradual, ledge, bridge, badge. So is your mind blown or what? I thought the J sound was just represented by G and J. So let's think about the J sound. The J sound is made very similarly to the way that we make the J sound, which I made a video already all about that sound. The J sound and the J sound are almost exactly the same in the way that we produce them in our tongue position. The only thing that's different is that with the J sound, we vibrate our vocal cords, whereas we don't vibrate our vocal cords with the J sound. So if I take my hands to my throat and I say those two sounds, J, J. J. I'm going to feel that little tiny vibration of the vocal cords when I say the J sound. As for what's going on in my mouth, my tongue is cupping up against the hard palate, okay? The tongue is pressing up, it's cupping up on all edges. So all, all edges of the tongue are going to be pressing up against the palate and releasing quickly in order to get that nice, crisp, clear sound. J. J. And you may be asking or wondering where in the mouth exactly is it pressing up or are the edges of your tongue pressing up? Well, it's not far forward on the alveolar ridge. It's not right behind your front teeth. It's a little further back. It's sort of that place in the palate where your palate starts to move upward, curve upwards. So it's on that, it sort of feels like a, a ledge or an edge in the inside of your mouth. So you're going to cup up your tongue and then release it quickly in order to get that just sound. I'm going to say it five times in isolation so you can really start to hear it and perhaps you'll practice with me so that you can start to play around with where your tongue needs to be in order to get this sound nice and crisp and clear. J. 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 So as always, I'm going to give you three methods that you can use to start to hear the sound and then also solidify it. A lot of us can produce a sound in isolation, but it becomes so much more difficult when we start adding them into syllables, words, phrases, sentences, conversational speech, and spontaneous speech is obviously the most difficult for us to integrate a, a new sound that we're learning. But we're going to just start by having you practice in a set of eight words for method one. So for method one, you're going to take a set of eight targeted words, you'll record yourself saying them, then you'll practice saying them at least three times a day, and then after a week or two or less, if you're making quick progress, you'll re-record yourself and compare that recording to your baseline recording. So interestingly enough, a lot of the words for this uh, targeted list for the J sound are names in American English, and two of them are letters. So here are the words. G, J, Jane, Jill, Gel, Jam, Joe, John. For method two, you're going to play around with minimal pairs. And this set of minimal pairs is going to be particularly helpful for those of you who are native speakers of Spanish because a very common substitution for the J sound is substituting it with a Y sound. So instead of saying the word joke, someone might say yoke if their native language is Spanish. 
So this is a set of binocular pairs that's going to be particularly helpful for native speakers of Spanish, but it may be helpful for you as well. Also, just so that you can feel the difference of your, what your tongue is doing in your mouth, it may bring uh, increased awareness to the just sound. So with this set of minimal pairs, you're going to practice saying them as many times as you need, focusing on making the y sound distinct from the j sound. Let's focus a little bit on the y sound versus the j sound. What's going on with the tongue? What makes these two sounds distinct and unique from each other? Well, the y sound is also made by vibrating the vocal cords, but your tongue tip is not touching the palate at all. So the y, let's just say it a few times, y, y, y. What I feel is that the, the back edges of my tongue are pressed up, but the tongue tip is down, and it's behind my, my bottom teeth, behind these teeth right there. So, yeah, yeah. I also noticed that I could say that yeah sound yeah, for a while until I include that vowel. Yeah. Whereas we know with the just ja sound, it's not a continuous sound. We release it quickly, ja, ja, and then it's over. Okay, so that's, those are two things to keep in mind, is your tongue tip is down for the Y, whereas it's up for the J. And then also the Y sound we could prolong or elongate, whereas the J sound we can't. So here are the minimal pairs. J, yay. Jet, yet. Jack, yak. Joke, yoke. Jam, yam. Gel, yell. For method three, you're going to record yourself saying the set of eight targeted words from method one, and then you're going to listen back to yourself. It's much more of an activity to bring awareness uh, to yourself to figure out what exactly are you doing, what substitution are you making for this ja sound. You might be making the ya sound, you might be making the ch sound, or you might be making the j sound. Those are three common substitutions for this ja sound. So what you'll do is simply listen back to your recording and figure out what is the substitution that you're making and what are you doing differently with that just sound that you could change in order to make it nice and strong, clear, and crisp for the j. Okay, so if we're doing the y for the j, we've already covered what you can do to make changes for that. As for the ch sound, if you are making the ch sound instead of the j sound, what you want to do is hold your hand on your vocal cords, right around here on your throat, and just feel that vibration. Compare and contrast. You might say chi, g, chi, g. And then for the j and the j, j, j. J is a continuous sound, and we will cover it in another video later on. It is uh, different from the J sound in that, again, it's a continuous sound. You do vibrate your vocal cords, but you um, are not getting a crisp, sharp uh, puff of air coming out because you are not blocking the air with your tongue like you do for the J sound. The J sound comes up in words such as beige, like the color beige, beige, but j -j 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 is different from the J sound because it's continuous and you're not creating a, a puff of air. So if you notice that that's the substitution you're making, you really want to focus on cupping up your tongue, pressing all sides of your tongue up against the roof of your mouth and releasing it quickly so that you get a nice puff of air instead of making some sort of sound or positioning the tongue in a way that air continues to flow out. All right, guys, thanks for hanging in with me through this video. I know it is a bit of a doozy, this just sound, especially because it shows up in so many different ways in our writing in American English. As I like to say, it's not about accent, it's about clarity. And so I'm proud of you for bringing some awareness to this sound so that you can just be aware and realize that this is a sound in American English that may not already exist in your native language. And so you can feel more confident and comfortable getting at these words, practicing these words, adding new words into your vocabulary without feeling like you're stumbling over them or without feeling like people are not understanding you very clearly when you produce them. If you haven't done so already, definitely hit that subscribe button and the notification button so that you get the little beep buzz ring when my next video is posted. Thanks guys!